Thank you again, uh, John, for accepting to be with us today. Uh, we are dwelling the land, and this is a podcast. My name is Rob Otusi. I actually just talk about a lot about uh, immigrant to the United States, sometimes anywhere in the old world. So it doesn't matter. Um, principles are principles. You apply them anywhere it works. So uh, I will let you introduce yourself, and then uh, I'll come back. To, then uh, I think we'll take our chat from there. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Likewise, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. And I love what you do. Watch a couple of your podcasts. And the topics that you bring up are so amazing. That are, as you said, it. no matter where you're from, we're all immigrating here. And the topics that you bring up, like last time I was, I think a couple of days ago, I was listening to visas, the mindset, a bunch of other stuff that I aim to help immigrants. My name is Asro John Shokorov. I go by John. I am from Uzbekistan. I immigrated here to States in 2005, $200 in my pocket, a bag of clothes that actually ripped, but it's a typical immigrant story, right? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I, I came, for the first time I came to the United States in 1981. Yeah. Uh, I came as a student. Uh -huh. I came to Bowie State University in Maryland. I got my degree there in finance. Uh, also, when back, I came originally from Nigeria. My country of birth was Nigeria. Uh -huh. Went back to Nigeria, worked in the finance uh, industry for about 10 years. Then came back to the United States again. So, and this kind of helped me to be able to know what immigrants go through in America. Yes. Uh, we, we always allow other people to tell our stories. Yes. But I just decided we need to let the people know our story ourselves. And so I decided, uh, so pretty much it was what I have been through as a student and coming back again, uh, all the struggles, I just put them together and I said, it, people like me need help. And this is, and by God's grace, I'll be cause of uh, being determined we have been able to do a lot of things. I pastor a church of about 2,000 members. And apart from that, I do business. I major really in construction. I do other businesses. Uh, I've, I've, I used to run a bakery. Mm -hmm. I, at the moment, I run, a, I have Amazon, Amazon business. I, I sell mm -hmm. on Amazon. I've had to partner with somebody for a concrete mix, mixing plant. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I just sold my 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 own uh, shares, you know. I right. so so I, I have done some few things, and I realized that uh, actually I, I started all those things because there was I came in, you know, not really having the right paper, mm -hmm. so I needed to fend for myself. Uh, we started a school when I came in; we didn't have any paper to work. We started a school. Mm -hmm. That school is about twenty four years old now and the school is still running where we train people on nurses aid uh, medication aid on you know all med medical vocational school so these all these things we have been able to do here and there and uh, it has paid off really but majorly now i'm into construction i i buy land you know sell if i need to sell develop build houses and sell them so so this has been the journey. We have gone through some of the hardship of immigrant, and we have seen that it's possible to survive if you really determine and you are ready to work it out. Yes, totally agree. This country has the opportunities. At least I never felt like we might not have all the cards to to that some other, I guess our counterparts have that grew up here, right? We might not have the connections. We might not have the money access. We might not have the degrees. But one thing this country has is opportunities and I believe they're equal if you're willing to work for them. And yeah. what you do is so amazing because you're trying to give back to as many immigrants as you can so you can actually empower them. And then in return, they start paying forward, right? The, the idea is to start paying forward. Mm -hmm. we, we probably won't catch up with those who have helped us in the past, but if we can pay forward, then we're all going to be stronger as a nation and, and as the world as well, because we have people around the world that we, as immigrants, most of us that we take care of, right? Our yes. mothers, brothers, siblings, whatnot. We have our obligations over there as well. It's not just here. It's not just us. So yeah. thank you for what you do. It's, um, it's admirable. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's nice you talk about that. I mean, maybe we need to talk about some of this, uh, some of the challenges that we go through as immigrants. And like I said, one of them is when you come into the country, some are privileged, they win lottery visa and they come in. Some yes. they get immigrant visa before they never come in. Let's talk about that. For me, yes. the first time I ever came, I, I came as a student. Yes. So because it was a student visa, I couldn't stay. I had yes. to go back. So the second yes. time I came in, I came back. Yeah, I came as a visitor. But because yes. I was connected to the church, and I was so active in the church, and I began to take leadership role in the church. So the church was able to uh, file for me as a religious worker. Uh -huh. and, and, and through that, I, I was able to get my stay regularized in the country. So yes. I don't know about, I don't know your own story about coming because this is the first major challenge of an immigrant. Yes, absolutely. And as you said, some come, the lucky ones come with green card, right? Yes. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the lucky one. But the luckier ca category is actually those that are born here already, right? Mm -hmm, you yeah. don't even have to worry about this. It's our kids. Yes. Those are the luckiest ones. Um, some come with temporary visas, as you as you have. I mm -hmm. did arrive with H2B, which is unqualified work visa, which is a temporary uh, three months visa. Mm -hmm. Others, even worse, right? Some swim through the border and run through the border. Their fate or the obstacles they have to overcome to be successful in this country are way more mm -hmm. than those that come with at least a visa. Because then yeah. they have to go through more immigration process yeah. and the paperwork is more difficult. But yeah, in my case, it was unqualified H2B visa Then I eventually fell in love and then got married and got the mm. um, green card and et cetera. So mine was somewhat straightforward. But again, yeah. when you're here, you don't know how, how lucky you are, right? Like, because you're like, <laughs> first time, it, it, it was my, um, my surprise when I was walking in the streets of Baltimore when I just arrived, 20, 22 year old kid, like a teenager who's thinking like everything, we're immortal, I'm bulletproof, I can do whatever, right? And then that's when when you're like, your, your ego is up and you still didn't take all the life's lessons and you're walking on the street and I, at least I was doing whatever it, it took, whatever it needed. I was mopping floors, parking cars, doing moving and et cetera. And I saw a beggar first time mm -hmm. in my life in America. And that was an American citizen, a relatively young gentleman. And, and I'm like, I'm sorry, what is it that you're trying to do? He's like, do you have money? I'm like, like, it just didn't, it just didn't hit me. But mm -hmm. then eventually, yeah, I guess if, if you're lazy, if you don't have determination, then, then you, you, you do to succeed. It doesn't matter what you have. But one of the strengths that immigrants have by coming, by deciding to immigrate from our countries to, to come to this country, we leave everything behind. Yep. And when we leave everything behind, we take very big risk. And mm. we step in into unknown and we all are, are afraid of unknown. Yep. That's what scares people, right? When you, are, grew, when you grow up with your parents, you have their, you're protected by their shields. And the first time you're stepping out, that's an unknown. When you're working for an employer you get your w-2 paychecks and you're like oh i'm set but the unknown that scares us so the good news for us those that already made it here regardless what visa status we came with we've already taken a very very bold step by leaving everything and everyone we know behind mm. and relocating here which takes me to another segue is if we've taken a risk in the past and we know we can do this there's nothing literally stopping us now from pushing forward to starting our companies, purchasing yeah. our houses, making this world better, but by taking risks, right? But it just happens that, in my opinion, we forget quite a few things like this. So, for example, remember, I mean, we don't, most of us don't remember, but if we, if we compare to toddlers, toddlers yeah. crawl, right? Mm -hmm. And what they do, they get up and then they fall. But what they do again? They get back up and then they fall, they get back up. So we have this strength of resilience to get back up. Otherwise, we would still be crawling. We would never learn how to walk. Yeah. That innate feeling when we were born was with us. And then we decided to take a lot of chances to relocate to this country. So mm. 
now if if we are making excuses and not charging forward yeah. then we just forgot the past and we probably just need a reminder that we've done this before you can do it again yeah. uh, you know uh we 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 build our resilience even getting into the country i came for the first time at the age of 18 coming to uh-huh. school uh I, i'm the last born of in my family so i was taking care of everybody looked after me i had got the, all the attention and here I was i in the united states uh i needed to work three jobs i work a fast food restaurant work right. convenience store and then right. get to distribute newspaper early in the morning and i still right. needed to go to school so right. i mean I, I remember the first time i had to work in a fast food restaurant I just called my mom and I started weeping on the phone because <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard. It was so hard, right. me, you know. But right. then through that, I had to. I needed to get a college degree. I had to just get my way through it, right. and through that, I was able to build my hard work ethics from there. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and this is something that works for immigrants. And, and I'm saying this because some immigrants maybe have to be going through that right now. Right. And they are thinking, wow, what, what am I here? Yeah, you are building your resilience. <laughs> That's what you are doing, you know. It's yeah. like building a foundation for yourself. And, you know, right. that foundation pays off at the end of the day. So when you are ready to start from ground zero, you can't fall again because you, you can't fall below zero. Yes. <laughs> so you can yes. only go higher and higher. And I think this is the strength that all uh, those are immigrants who knows why they are here, who really are here for business, who are here to do well, who are here to make use of the opportunity. This is something that works for us. Yes, absolutely. That's the good news. As you said, when you're on the floor, you can't go down <laughs> anymore. The yeah. only way is the way up. You just have to keep trying. Yes. So going back to, to my statement about resilience, there's two main features a human character must have to succeed, in my opinion. One is resilience, which means when you knocked out, and in this world, I can pretty much guarantee, unfortunately, all of us will be multiple times knocked out, Mm -hmm. regardless, physical, emotional, personal, right? It's it's only unlimited times. And the ability to get back up is that we already had. The second ability that is also as essential as the first one, in my opinion, it's adaptability. What happens is when you get back up and you see that fist coming to knock you out again, you have to remember the first time you got punched and you got yeah. laid down. So you have to adapt. So once yeah. you have developed those two skills and honed them in, I think um, sky is the limit. This country is about the opportunities. You I are correct. To, I want you to look at the first your first one year in America. What, yes. what did you have? What did you have to deal with in your first one year in America? Oh, that was that is the <laughs> toughest, right? Yeah. So um, we all know about a cultural cultural yeah. shock period, mm-hmm. right? We all have to go. And I write about this in my book too, that the phenomenon of cultural shock and what we have to go through the levels. I like yourself, I am the third child and I always grew up with extra attention. I am the youngest and the, 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 the third son out of um, three. So I always had this extra attention and then I, I was mommy's boy and I think I'm still am luckily <laughs> to some extent. <laughs> I remember yeah. calling my mom and telling her, she's like, I, I was whipping too, but um, uh, slightly covering the other things that I didn't want her to know because I didn't want her to, to worry. And this was one of the things when we arrived here and instead of promised job that we, they were going to put us in the office uh, front desk, uh, receptionist serving tables, mm-hmm. that's what I kind of applied and was approved for. They put us to housekeeping and then they would come pick us up and drop us off. We were put in a trailer. There were like 12 of us, poorly mm-hmm. ventilated trailer. And it was in the middle of somewhere in suburbs of Denver, Colorado. And I remember those moments vividly because I was like literally walking. And the streets were so wide and flat and no potholes. And mm-hmm. every light bulb is, was on. Mm-hmm. And I had small kitchenette in this trailer. And we had coffee maker. And we had... Uh, splendid and mixer and half and half. And I'm, I was surprised, but at the same time, I was taken back. I'm like, how is this possible in a country that is so developed, so amazing? Mm. The slave like conditions are still exist because the guy mm. would just pick us up, would never see the paycheck, drop us off, one phone, mm. poorly ventilated bathroom. So I remember that 
But I was calling to my mom and she's like, how is America? I'm like, mom, it's amazing. It's, it's <laughs> great. The light doesn't flicker. The water runs. I have even like half and half in for my coffee, right? Mm-hmm. And she's like, so how do you feel? I'm like, I'm doing great, mom. I'm doing great. <laughs> but inside I was going through like, oh, this is bad. I've never felt this much humiliation in my life. Yeah. And I also remember once I went through those obstacles, luckily to my cousin who was here, who I'd only spoken twice all my 22 years before I arrived to America. So I didn't know whether he would turn out a good guy or not. But when I called him, (laughs) he happened to be an amazing guy who just pulled Mm. me from Denver, Colorado, got me here to Baltimore. Mm. And when I was going through the stage, and you probably still may be able to recall the feelings, When you go through the different stages of cultural shock, there's a stage where you just want to pack up everything that you have and you just want to go home. Yeah. And in that stage, you are just not able to assimilate. It's like milk, like oil and water that don't mix, Mm. right? You're still not able to mix. And I was walking, I would go to a Safeway or Giant and I would start seeing familiar faces, that seemed to me that those are the people that I know from back home. But then I'd like snap myself out. I'm like, no, I don't know them. And it just, I think this was the the period where I was about to break and Mm. pack up and go home. And this for me happened about six months in Um, statistically or scientifically, it seems like it happens between six months to a year. For any new immigrant, if you are currently going through the stage where you literally want to pack up and go back home because your mom is there, because your friends are there, because your girlfriend, boyfriend is there, then know that it'll probably get a little worse, but then it'll get better. You just have to stick through it because had I backed up and left back then, I would have not become or had the opportunities that I have now and I enjoy every day. So... It was like a longer segue, but I hope I did answer you. Yeah, you know, for me, I mean, coming at the age of 18 and having to go through all the working two, three jobs, getting a college degree, still having my parents at at home. After my college education, I packed my stuff and went back. But then getting there, of course, I had a good job. But getting there, I realized I still belong here. So spending 10 years over there, uh, by the time I was 33, I was on my way back again. <laughs> yes. So coming back again, uh, at least I had more understanding. It was clearer to me that I, I, this is my choice. I wanted to stay here. So it was easy for me. And I got good friends because during my college days, I mean, my, my friends are still around. So I was able to stay with one of them and took good care of me because he understood I wasn't coming to be a liability. Uh, I know how this country works. You know, we've been body for a while and, you know, contacting each other. So it was easy for me to come in, even though he was he, he had a two bedroom apartment and he had a, he had a newborn baby, newly married. They stay in one room. I said my wife and I had two children. We had to be staying in one room. And that was how he was he was selling cars, buying cars from the auctions. And we got we had to do that together and run around until I started to get my own apartment. He had to pay for me in my first apartment just to stay there. And, you know, we started because then when you don't have any paper, you don't get a job. So until we have to start our school to start training people because we needed to get something where nobody is going to ask us by work permit. So we needed to be our own boss. And this is something that I feel that anyone listening to us today is an immigrant. You think, well, I don't have my paper to work. I don't have work authorization. Yes, that means you need to think and do something for yourself. You know, uh, you know inventions are given birth to in adversity. So w- yeah. when you are going through tough time, that's when you think most. That's when that's not when you need to be depressed. That's yes. not when you need to, to to feel sorry for yourself. You don't need to be looking for a handout. You yes. just, if you are going to if you are going to get help, get help substantially. Get help on something that will move you forward. That will take you from where you are to where you are going. Yes. Not yes. getting help just to survive and stay pitiful, yes. stay stay suffering, stay uh, complaining. Yes. No, no, no. That's not what it is. T- totally agree. And uh, to add to your statement is, I would like to emphasize: get help from those that have achieved more in a field you're trying to pursue. Yeah. And I'll elaborate. 
If you would like to become a business owner and start your own business, don't be asking your mom, who's been a, a, a teacher, a retired teacher, about a business advice. Or your friend who still is in college. Ask a person who's been and done a little more. And you'll find that in this country that a lot of people, when you ask for help, they're open, especially if it's an immigrant to immigrant, you're, you're open. You just give your advice. Same thing goes for a family marriage, relationships. For example, if you need a relationship help, don't ask your best friend who divorced two times already. <laughs> yeah. Ask the person who's been in a happy marriage for a long time. Not just a marriage where they now live like a roommate, but go and find a person who you can look up to and they're all husband and wife and they're actually holding a hand still crossing the road. That's amazing. Now go ask those people, right? So the qualified help needs to be asked from qualified people. But you're totally right. Yeah. And you know, one of the challenges, again, for immigrant is the expectation from family members from yes. country of origin. Because uh, the impression that uh, I, I used to have a guy, the day he got here, the, the father called him and said, have, uh, do you have a job? Have they started paying you? And I'm like, where yes. does that ever happen in the old world? Except you want to go to space, <laughs> you know? Yes. So, uh, so the expectation is so high. So some people sold their cars, sold their homes to come to America, yes. get their ticket, and the family yes. members are pushing on them. Maybe they yes. borrowed money to come over All here. Right. They are, they are, so the demands are so much. I remember one guy came to me and said, oh, it's too tough around here. I, I, it's too tough. And I said, well, if it's tough around here, why don't you go back to where you come from? He said, no, you don't understand. I said, what is it that I need to understand? He said, my siblings will kill me if I go back. <laughs> it would be like, you are our only hope. Why yes. did you come back? <laughs> Why did yes. you come back? You know. So, I mean, the expectation is so much. Uh, people are working hard. They are trying to take care of families in their country of origin. And meanwhile, they still need to get their feet on the ground in America. So one of the things I feel that immigrants need to do is to be sincere with themselves. And sometimes they have to let people know, hey, I'm going to need time to get myself together. I'm not going to be calling you every day. I'm not going to be even call you every week. Probably I'll call you every month and send you a test, but I need to get myself together here because you can be running and be looking backward. You are never going to get to where you are going. So I see a lot of immigrants uh, being hindered because there is so much pressure from them. You are just here, you are living in an apartment and you are trying to build a house or buy a home in your country of origin. Maybe you never get to live there any longer. I know sometimes some of us have good family culture. We want to make sure our family members are okay, but you can't do that overnight. You can't, you can't carry anybody when you are not on your feet. So th this is some of the challenge. Totally agree. Um, in my case, I was lucky. I did, there were no demands. So they mm -hmm. gave me about five years to get established. Wow, you are blessed. So I, I was blessed, but yeah, not yeah. everybody, not yeah. everybody is blessed, right? Especially yeah. some people from Latin America that run violence from mm. violence, or you could be borrowing money from the mafia, mm. and then you have to pay it back. In those mm. cases, of course, you have to work a little harder to pay that off, mm. because not everybody is lucky. But I totally agree with you, because had they put high demands on me, was within those five years that took me to establish, to learn, to start my business, to risk, to lose, to start another one. Mm. Or else I would probably not be in here where I am now. So if we've got parents listening outside of the country for those, their children, for example, or relatives, then if you can let the pressure go off of the person who's here and give them an opportunity to establish themselves, then they'll go further as opposed to literally like, kind of demanding from them now, but you're totally right. It's case by case. And if somebody's putting a gun in your head or, or knife <laughs> to your throat, then you yeah. have to make it happen. But in, in other cases, yes, it does take time. And, and doesn't matter how bright you are, this is a different culture, different system. And it takes you time to learn, make your mistakes, get back up, learn. Well, one other thing that I had to go through was, uh... Uh, credit system you know yes. where I, in the country where i come from i mean it was 
pr pretty much cash for cash and things like that. Yes. So for you to get used to the card for the credit card system here, I had a terrible credit for a long time because uh, you will know that if you are if you are just late for three days, uh, you keep on doing that. You get my first credit card was one. I will never forget that credit card it was three hundred dollar credit card, and that yes. credit card I was never it Bank of America. No, it was one one of, one of those countries, whether it was countrywide or something like I that. What so one of those funny cards, you know? And then they take off a membership fee like ninety dollars. So <laughs> when I got the card, it was I had only two hundred and ten dollars to spend, and I didn't right. know. I just went out and bought something of two hundred and fifty, and before yes. I knew it, I had to pay over uh, uh, over a limit over limit fee uh yes. before, and you know that became a headache so you yes. just realized that uh you, you you got your credit messed up so yes. quickly and uh because you don't have steady income you don't have so you are dealing with so many things so you realize that your credit is not in order and in yes. america you can't do get a lot done business wise if you don't yes. have good credit. So sometimes they are sending all this paper to you, fill it and send it in. We were completing the forms. We were sending it in without <laughs> knowing that, <laughs> you know. Uh, they were asking who we were sending, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you just think that, oh, once I just fill out this form and send it in because they'll yes. say $30,000 is waiting for you, 10000 yes. And then you don't know. You just send everything in. And this thing is yes. hitting on your credit and hitting your, your credit. Correct. And before you know it, you just have all your credit totally messed up. So this is something yes. that immigrant has to be careful about that uh yes the opportunities are there but not blind opportunities not blind yes. so you have to open your eyes and, and be yes. sure that you know what you are doing yeah totally yes totally agree and they say bad credit is better than not to have a credit so yeah. in in the book that i recommend to people when they come a establish credit because my system was the same we still don't have credit system mm -hmm. there it's a cash mm -hmm. system and mm -hmm. there are a couple of advices that i give that i think beneficial so as soon as you arrive as an immigrant go apply for a credit card and if none is given get a secured credit card from your bank yeah. which is you put a exactly amount and then you you use it and then you pay back and in a year it normally becomes assuming you're able to keep up with your payments becomes a normal credit card because this the earlier you start building it the more buying power you will have which means mm -hmm then you can take a bigger moves in, in a business. So what, what one of the things that I advise is mindset change. If you are qualifying for a credit card, then what I would recommend you do is think about it as somebody, a friend you know and trust, gave you that money as a loan to pay back in full at each month, then he or she will give you that money again. So when you think about that, then you don't spend more than actually you can pay back because that's the key. And you don't even want to max it. If your credit card is 300, you want to stay at $200 or so, but get in a habit of paying back your credit card because then it'll start establishing your credit. Then you'll be able to buy the house for cheaper. Then you're going to be able to flip the house. Then you're going to be able to rent the basement of the house and house hack. Then you're going to be able to get a car. Then you're going to start a business and the opportunities open up. Unless you come with a lot of cash, that's a totally different story. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even when you come with a lot of cash, uh, you just realize that it runs out so quickly. So, so, yes, so, it does. It does. <laughs> so really, one of the counsel, I, uh, the advice I'll give to immigrants is patience, patience, and patience. Yes. Uh, yes, it's a land of opportunity, but you have to work it out. It's not going to happen overnight. It takes yes. its time. You have to pay your dues. You have yes. to learn the rope. You have to, like you said, fall down and rise again. Uh, when you come here, even when you come here with green cards, it still takes you like about five years to get your to get yourself properly settled. If you yes. don't come with a green card, it, sometimes it takes ten years and takes forever. Yes. So, yes. so there's need for patience. If you're an immigrant, things are not going to happen overnight. This yes. and this, you need to know. Even if for people who are still in their country, they desire to come to America. They need to realize it's not going to happen overnight. Don't make promises. Some people get married, they leave their wife in their country, and they come, they say, oh, you, I'll, I'll be back in another year. You will never be back in another one year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you just have to be patience and patience and patience. All this is, is going to require that no matter what. Correct. As older you get, you start figuring out that the good things take time yeah. and the patience. 
there is no such thing as fast cash overnight. Mm. And there's no such thing as you just go a hockey stick. You can build a hockey stick business, mm -hmm. but overnight success takes 10 years of hard work at least. So there's like countless nights where you like literally are crying and about the turn back out, go back home, shut down that business. I remember sitting in my basement in the Baltimore house that was that I was renting from my employer. I was actually renting the room. So I was sub renting the house mm. that I was renting and the basement was my office. One of the coldest night and the cloud was falling. Baltimore gets a little gray here because of the structure architecture of mm. the buildings was, was bricks a lot and the narrow houses, townhouses. It could feel like it, it's compressing you, depressing. And then I was looking at my bank account statement, opening mm. that night, and I probably was the only light on that street that was on. Mm. And I'm like, why am I going through this? <laughs> but yeah, it does, it does take a lot of self-realization, a lot of failure. You have to be able to digest the failure and not to let it keep you down on the floor with your shoulders back at the floor. You're totally correct. And uh, one of the things maybe uh, is to look at uh, before we begin to round up is uh, how foreigners can get to America and settle down too quickly. Like in, in that means get so comfortable. For people who come from Africa, most especially, one of the major challenges in Africa are uh, people having the, a, a nice home to live in, a uh -huh. nice car to drive. Right. Nice road to drive on, water, light. Yeah. These are basic amenities in America. Right. So you just realize that once immigrants get here, they get a job. It doesn't matter the job. You can walk to any car dealer and get a nice car. Yes. You can you can even get an apartment or, you know, get a mortgage and have your own home. Yes. And yes. once that is done, they settle down. They don't right. desire much again. Because yes. it is something that was lacking in their home country. So right. once they get, once they have those basic things, they're like, wow, this is the American yeah. dream. No, this is an American dream. You can do better than that. So yes. I'm just saying to an average immigrant, don't just settle for having a mortgage, having a car. No, you can do better than that. So we all have Not to only. know that there is still so much to do. You need to have your own company. You need yes. to uh, hire people. You need to to make sure that you you give back to the community. These are all the yes. things that an immigrant. So we need to integrate ourselves, become part of this system, and yes. be able to go as you just you know. It's like it's it's a land of opportunity. So if it's a land of opportunity, don't just settle down, getting a job, getting a car, and getting a house. Yes, you know? yes. that is true. Depends on so the, there are two minds of categories. When I first wrote my and finished my book and it, there was a beta version and I gave it to beta reader to read. So she came back with a valid co concern and she's like, look, you talk a lot about entrepreneurship and starting a business and business types, but how about some people that just comfortable working for someone else? I'm like, that is true. That is a valid reason. If you are a type of person who <coughs> most of us are taking risks or we're risk takers because we left this back home and we come here and we most likely we're not going to stop. We just need a little bit more motivation to keep charging forward because, I mean, the immigrant journey is like why America, this is the Hollywood journey that paints the big picture for us to how to calm illegal troubles. And it goes, goes, goes to, and, and there's like an Arnold Schwarzenegger and Elon Musk, right? So mm. immigrants can achieve a lot. If you're passionate about starting your business, this is a country of opportunities and they are limitless for you. Literally, if you're comfortable in your shoes, let's say you 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 are an amazing coder from back home and you've got a Silicon Valley job, which is paying you enough and it allows you to, to make sure that you're sleeping at night peaceful. You don't have to do the accounting, taxes, legal, all the risk of running a business. That's quite all right as well. As long as it's fulfilling and you feel like you're going somewhere and just, you know, over there, you still have family that you're helping out. So it's not just you, you need time to get back up. But I, I'm more about like giving back as well, because we give to the community that we live by hiring within, by shopping within, by making sure the neighborhood is safe and uh, participating actively in neighborhood activities. But we also give back home and those that are needed. 
because now we, we're enhancing their lives too. So that it's it's a it, it's a challenge, it's a responsibility, but it's also a privilege when you think about it. What you can achieve single-handedly versus the family over there is so fulfilling when you're able to help them help your community. And at the same time, you're giving to charities that are helping kids to get the antibiotics, to get the people clean water and et cetera. It's amazing how much you can do. And you're so right. There's no reason for you to stop. Yeah. I I, I wrote a book. I call it Book of Business. Uh-huh. I had about 80 side hustles people can start with. In other words, you can an uh, immigrant uh-huh. can have a full-time job and still do right. a side hustle. The book is there on Amazon. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, which is people can just start with something little and grow it until they know that, wow, this is what I want to do. Yes. So at least, yes. uh, uh, and I want to just encourage immigrants who will be listening to us, uh, please help a fellow immigrant. Just help a fellow immigrant because sometimes uh, coming to America and um, getting established in America takes a lot, mentally, emotionally, uh physically, financially. So, and sometimes the excuse is, oh, if I help them, they're never going to, uh, they're never going to appreciate it. They're going to walk away on me when things are okay for them. Guess what? I've realized that immigrants, they have a lot of challenges. And as fellow immigrants, we need to understand where they are coming from. An average immigrant are pretty much economic immigrant. So, so, so sometimes they take decision so quickly because of the challenges they are going through. We just have to let learn to forgive each other. You know, just you know, some of them are going to mess up around you. Some of them are going to do things that they're not supposed to do. But we just have to forgive them. And this is what I always say: if this one mess up, I'm saying, who is the next person for me to help? Because it doesn't matter. I'm still going to help somebody else. And I want us to just have that attitude that. Uh, it's not about what the individual has done right or done wrong, but just a determination to see it as uh, as something that we are giving back because we are immigrants, we are helping other immigrants without really having any expectation from them. And I would really encourage every immigrant, make sure that you, you, you do your best to help a fellow immigrant. Yep, absolutely. I remember this study. There's a study. I just don't remember who did it, but I listened to it driving back home from work. And the study was for every dollar that you donate, somehow from universe, you get $1.40 back. So the intent is not to give, not, not when you donate and you expect, you don't give a thousand, it's not going to return to you 1,400. It's not a stocks, right? It's not, mm. you do that when you do it genuinely and you give it then it's going to come back to you multifold and not from this person that you gave, don't expect, right? So what you said is when you help someone, I don't expect to get anything from them. I expect to get nothing from them. I'm actually only paying forward for those that have helped me along the way. So if you're helping someone right now, and at some point this person will become established, then there's nothing you need from that person. Yeah. All you ask for this person to hopefully help the other fellow immigrants instead of one help five, now it's just multiplier that eventually, as they say, rising sea lifts all boats, which only looks makes us look way better, way mm-hmm. cooler, and contributing back into this country, which will allow us to bring in more of us here and create the opportunities here, there equally. Yeah, and for uh, the Ameri- our American hosts, they need to understand where we are coming from. Uh, a lot of them have a wrong impression of immigrants, you know, uh, especially sometimes saying, well, these are criminals, these are drug this, these are drug that. No, they are not. They, we are people looking for opportunities. We are people who come from nations that uh, where uh, leaders have disappointed the people. We have added a lot to this community. We have added a lot to the nation of America. We have added intelligence. We have added labor, hard work. Uh, you know, so so this is something that uh, yes, uh, I do tell people that just like in any profession, if you have a doctor, there will always be doctors who will have malpractices. Yes, there will be doctors who will mess up. Yes, the same way some immigrants will mess up. 
that yes. that should not make us to condemn every immigrant. There are a lot of immigrants doing very well for the country, doing yes. well, very well for, for the nation. We are here to contribute. We are here to make sure that we support the American dream and that we are a part of the American dream. So our American hosts need to understand us, uh, accept us, and be able to know that uh, we are bringing something unique. We are bringing yes. diversity to this society. And I, I believe that uh, they just need to be, not to be to stereotype, not yes. to just have a, a general idea that one messes up, everybody messes up. No, it doesn't work yes. like that. So every country have their own deficiency. Every community yes. have their own deficiencies. And I believe that uh, with that, that will make the journey for us very easier and uh, really easy and successful. Yeah. Yes. There's a difference, right? When you arrive to somebody's house and whether if the host is welcoming, then the energy is there and the flow is there. And mm -hmm. if you come to somebody's house and they're like, like you can sense the ne negativity and energy, you don't, you don't even want to stay there. You want to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so it's mutually beneficial. Of course, you can't blame if there was a bad crop and an immigrant did something bad to a host, then it's justified mm. if it's just the media that's brainwashing you and affecting you but then there's there's something you can do about it i'm i'm now referring to hosts right you can read go interact with immigrants because statistically most of us are contribute back to this country had you not welcomed elon musk mm. <laughs> you would exactly. not yeah. 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 We, tesla we is going to dominate now. the world yeah. yes yeah so but you're right. Yeah. So I, I really want to thank you for this opportunity for us to Likewise. be together. And I uh, will look forward for another opportunity and maybe sometimes uh, bring you here to Dallas and come and speak to our congregation. Uh, if I come around to Maryland, which I should before the end of the year, I'll probably Absolutely. follow you and just stop by there. You know, I, I went to Bowie State University, Maryland, so I'm still... Uh -huh. A Maryland guy, one way or the other. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, yeah. So really, and uh, I, I do a lot of stuff. Uh, do boot camp for business people, run all that. So if uh, I may need you sometimes, I'm just ask you to come around and speak to them. Sounds good. Absolutely. Yes. Hit me up, and uh, if your travel happens to be during uh, summertime, we've got amazing waters. So the okay. boating is one of the really cool activities to do here in Maryland. Unfortunately, the season is short, but if you have a choice, pick a hotter summertime okay. and uh, we'll check out the water, water view as well. Okay. So once again, to all our viewers, uh, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to impact you. And I, we hope that this has been a blessing to you. We will come back to you again individually and uh, check off, check out all our YouTube, all our Instagram, and uh, all these books we have mentioned to you. And then if you send us test emails, we will respond to you. So uh, it's a pleasure coming to you, the viewers and listeners. And John, you are blessed. Thank you so much. And talk to Thank you. Thank you. Likewise. Thanks for having me and everything you do for, for us, the immigrants. <laughs>